Welcome to Trans Theories, the show where we talk about everything Transformers. I'm Jason. Today we're going to be looking at all the Studio Series figures that are in Wave 3. And the first Studio Series figure that we're going to be looking at is the man himself, Bumblebee from Bumblebee the Movie. Now looking at this Bumblebee, it looks really movie accurate to what he actually has in the film. And there's a few things that I want to point out. The first thing I want to point out is, if you look at his vehicle mode, I believe that Rust maybe is because he was sitting in the junkyard for so long in the trailer, which is a lot movie accurate. And I think it's really good. The next thing I want to point out is if you can see on his right hand, you can see like some type of gun. Now this is a completely different gun that we have ever seen. Just because as those like looking barrel things around it and that's completely different from other Bumblebee movie cannons. This Bumblebee also has a retractable face mask as you can see right there and we'll talk about that a little bit later. The next thing I want to point out is, is that Blade again. Now if you remember in my last video when we talked about that other Bumblebee figure, we could see that he had a blade. And this Studio Series figure now also has a blade, which leads me to believe that this must have to do something with the plot. Now the last thing in the shot that I want to point out is, you can see in the right hand side, the last night Bumblebee that came out in the last night toy line. And we'll get to him later because this is actually a two-pack because it's a then and now and I'll show you that a little bit later Now looking at this shot of B we can see his feet a lot better And I actually really dig the feet and I think it's like really cool how they did it The only thing I don't like is how he has those tires on the sides But what could they do you know it's a toy and it looks really good in my opinion I also do like how his chest piece all folds up like that and it's way better than the last Bombi toy that I covered Now looking at this picture we can actually see the full box of Bombi and his last night counterpart But keeping our focus on the studio series Bombi that's from the Bombi movie we can see on his box that he has a regular face and his mask which means it's retractable we can also see his blade and another gimmick that's under it which I led to believe that I think that is his cannon I could be wrong because it is getting covered up by Bumbu's face but I'm almost positive that is a cannon the second to last thing in a shot that I want to point out is as you can see when he's in a vehicle form you can see that number on his hood now that's not gonna be on your figure because it, this is like a prototype and they have to have that number and I don't know why but if you guys do know in the comments please let me know but when you buy this figure it will not have that number so don't worry now moving on to the last night Bumblebee we can see him on the side now sadly this is a re-release so if you did miss out on the last night Bumblebee like I did then I guess it's good for you but the issue is this is not a studio series figure and what I mean is they did not change anything it's a completely the same he doesn't even have his hammer and I actually would recommend it a car Tommy movie the best one over this but because it does come with this Bumblebee I'm gonna pick this one up with it because it kind of comes with it and you can't really get him separately so like I said before if you missed out on the last night Bumblebee he is a really good mold the next two studio series figures that I want to show off is the golden versions of Bumblebee. Now the first Bumblebee that's golden is the one that we got in wave one and it's his 2007 Camaro look. And he comes packaged with two movie masterpiece cassettes which I think they would work with the NPM Soundwave or maybe even Blaster. And he also comes in this really cool looking box where you can see Bumblebee crossing his arms and when you open that box you can see Bumblebee when he's in car mode in this old retro cassette tape. And the thing that looks really cool is Bumblebee's all golden and I don't know if I'm going to pick this up solely because I already have the original release but if you guys want to get this it's definitely going to be worth your buck because it looks that cool. The same goes with Volkswagen Bumblebee and we can see him in his box and it also shows a repainted version of those cassette tapes and in this shot of the box we can see Bumblebee holding a boom box. So maybe this also has something to do with the film but I highly doubt it. Last thing I want to point out is with this and it's actually a really cool cameo to the Michael Bay version of this movie logo. As you can see when he's in vehicle mode he has that black stripe and what do you see on that black stripe? Well you can see the original Bone the movie logo which is an evil looking bee. And I think that's freaking amazing how they incorporated that and I, I'm gonna maybe pick this version up just because of that little icon. The next studio series figure is Shadow Raider, who's a repaint of Lockdown. Now Shadow Raider looks freaking amazing, just because of the mask and the new weapon. And the weapon actually looks like Lockdown Spark Extractor. Now for the reasoning behind this character, I honestly don't know why they got a studio series figure, but he looks freaking amazing. Just look at that head sculpt, it's way better than the original Lockdown because it has that mask. And honestly I like that mask more than his original face, so it's definitely a plus for me. I also like the fact that he's a Lamborghini that's orange and it's kind of like a popular color, I could be wrong because I do not know that much about cars but I know the orange Lamborghini is a pretty popular version and overall this figure is pretty solid even though it's a repaint of lockdown and tell me in the comments if you like the original lockdown better or this one now the next studio series figure I want to talk about is KSI Trax now I have mixed opinions about him just because he actually does not turn into a Chevy Trax but the overall toy looks pretty good and he pulls off the robot mode what Chevy Trax would actually look like he does have a remolded head which looks really cool and his weapon is a bit different as you can see he has two longer spikes than the original stinger toy had and those two extra spikes in store in the back of his car. Now I'm always going to predict that he's going to get an actual better toy maybe a few lines later 
and he can actually turn into a Chevy Trax, and I hope he does, but for the time being, if I do get this figure, I'll be using him as a KSI General. And I hope he does get repainted versions, maybe a red, green, yellow, and black, just to complete the KSI crew. And the very last thing that I want to talk about with Trax is, he still has those things that Stinger had on his back, but he does not have those little circle pieces with it. Which I think is kind of weird because it actually still has that piece, I wish I could just cut it off or unscrew it away, but it's still there, and I guess if you really wanted to, you could put Stinger's circles on him to get a blue version of Stinger. The next studio series figure that I want to talk about is Dark of the Moon Ratchet. Now this Ratchet is freaking amazing, and let me tell you why. The reason why this Ratchet is amazing is because 1, he actually has hands that can grab a gun, and that gun alone looks really cool, and 2, the paint on him looks a lot better than the original. Though this is the original, just repainted, it even looks a lot better now, just because of that extra paint. The only thing I don't like that much is the gray that's on him, and I think it's a little bit too dark and it should be white, but this Ratchet looks like to be a prototype, so I still have really high hopes. I also really like how they did the E4 on the side, and the head sculpt looks a lot better than the first version, in my opinion, just because it has that extra paint. Speaking of the figure itself, the only thing I do not like is that kibble piece that the original one also had, but that can be easily fixed if you cut it off and you glue it back onto the top. And if I do get this figure, I'll be doing a tutorial on how to do that. But overall, this Ratchet figure is one of my favorites. The second to last Studio Series figure that I want to talk about is Studio Series Ironhide. Now this figure has been out for a while, but he is part of Wave 3 and he should be getting released in the states pretty soon, so I might as well talk about him. Now looking at his robot mode, it looks freaking amazing, I really like the paint that's on his face and the cannons look really cool and spot on. I do like the chest proportions, but the only thing I don't really like is that little bar right there, but hey. It's still a toy, so what could you do? The back of Iron Knight looks really cool and kind of accurate to a CGI model because the CGI model was kind of like flat and stuff, and this definitely pulls off what it has to do. Now in this shot, we can see Iron Knight next to Jazz, and for some reason Jazz's feet are turned backwards, so don't worry when you get your Jazz figure, it will not look like that. But speaking of Ironhide, I think this scale works really well. And overall, these two figures side by side, it just looks magical and amazing. Also speaking of Ironhide, you can see that vent that's on his chest. Well, that vent should also be on the other side for movie accuracy, but in real life, the truck actually has it on one side. So they probably base it off the truck and not the movie. In this shot, we can see Ironhide in his amazing truck mode, and it looks really cool and a lot movie accurate to what it looked like in the film. The only thing I don't really like is that bumper piece, and I wish it was black instead of gray. His toes do stick out a little bit, but hey, it's still a transformer. The second to last Studio Series figure I want to cover is Dropkick. And before I talk about him, I want to give a shout out to Jason Star Prime, because that's how I learned about this figure. So thank you dude for making that video. But speaking of Dropkick, I'm going to be making a whole separate video about him being a triple changer, because if you remember, he actually turns into a car, and now he's a helicopter? Which is kind of weird, but this toy looks freaking amazing just by looking at it. The helicopter mode, it looks pretty good. I don't really like the blue with it, but that's just my personal nitpick. The feet represent what he had in that CGI picture, and his head definitely looks really cool and spot on. Kind of reminds me of Evac. Now the last Studio Series figure in Wave 3 is Studio Series Starscream, and he's in his Revenge of the Fallen color scheme. Now looking at this at face value, it looks freaking amazing, and I actually like it a lot more than the original release. I also do want to point out that this Starscream actually has a seat where his cockpit is, so that's really cool. His buzzsaw also looks movie accurate to what he had in Dark of the Moon, and if you really wanted, you could use that chainsaw for the original release because they use the exact same mold, and overall this is one of my favorite figures so far in the Studio Series lineup. Well, that's all for this toy analysis video. If you enjoyed, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe if you're new to join the Theorist Nation. As always, this has been Trans Theory saying, keep on theorizing.